special guest Bobby Slade joining us. And, and Bobby, we have seen your passion for horse racing yeah. lived out on the racetrack. But uh, how does that compare to uh, this whole environment, the sales environment? Oh, I love the sales. Uh, in fact, um, I really look forward to it. I'm, I'm always in the uh, the market for really well-bred uh, fillies, and that's sort of my long-term. Uh, goal and game is to acquire uh, some really, you know, well pedigreed and, uh, and hopefully good looking fill fillies that can really run and, and, and make them part of my broodmare band. So you had one last night in the sale, but yeah. bought her back. And that was I bought her back. Bound. Right, she's uh, uh, an unbridled song filly who's a half sister to the champion Stardom Bound, and I have no problem keeping her because um, <laughs> she's beautiful and she's got a great pedigree, and it's okay with me. Yeah. Now you're also selling as well as buying. Yeah. yeah. Which, is that a bit more nerve-wracking for you? Uh, I, I kind of like the action of it uh -huh. because, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I bred these fillies uh, and, and these colts, and so, um, you know, for the most part, I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to sell some to keep sort of the motor running, so to speak. You know, I mean, if you want to, I think if you want to be successful in horse racing and breeding, you have to sell some good things to keep it going, so that you can, you know, bring good horses to the racetrack and pay the bills and on and on. I mean, you hear that all the time, and and so I think there's a, I think there's an important balance as to um, let go of some things that you'd rather not sometimes, unfortunately, but it also puts, you know, a few dollars in the coffers to, you know, to pay the bills and keep your your program going. Last year at the Breeders' Cup, of course, they got to see there was more than real yeah. big effort. That must have been an exciting day for you. Yeah, I would say that was a big effort. That was <laughs> <laughs> that's that's putting it lightly, at least for me. You know, it's um, it was just one of, obviously my 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 funnest moment in horse racing for sure, and one of the most exciting moments of my life for sure. Yeah, it was terrific. And what about I, yeah. this year? <laughs> well. Um, uh, I have uh, actually a couple of possibilities for the Breeders' Cup. Uh, Her Smile, who won the Grade One prior S, you know, might may run in the uh, in the Philly and Mare Sprint, um, and uh, Super Espresso uh, may run in the uh, Ladies Classic, and uh, we'll see how more than real runs. She's going to run in the Grade One um, Garden City this weekend at, at Belmont, and if she runs well, you know, we'll, maybe we'll find something for her as well. One of the horses you have coming up uh, that you were selling, hip number 137, a smart strike out of uh, Wonder Again. Yeah. Tell us a little about that one. But Wonder Again, uh uh, Rich Santulli and I bought a piece of Wonder Again, and we're partners with John Phillips in, um, in, in that great race mare. I mean, she, we bought her right before she ran in the Breeders' Cup for the last time, we, and we obviously bought her to breed to. Fantastic family, and obviously one of the best, uh, one of the better mares of her generation. And this is uh, actually her, uh, her third foal. First one we're actually putting up for sale. And um, and she's and and I, 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 it's actually a colt, a smart strike colt, and it's gotten a lot of attention at the uh, at the barn. So you know, fingers crossed. And then you have 184, an unbridled song colt, and unbridled song just consistently sell very very well. And this one from a strong family as well. Yeah, Lockadina is a filly that or mare that I raced, and. Uh, you know, she comes from the better than honor family, you know, rags to riches, and, you know, just a, such a huge, strong family. And, you know, she's a great example of the kind of mares that I like to own. Um, and hopefully I'll own her for the rest of her life, and, and she'll produce great things. And, you know, Unbridled, there's a lot of really great Unbridled songs, especially in the first couple of books here. So it's a very competitive Unbridled song market, but I think that she show, I think that he shows very well. Bobby, I know you surround yourself with good people. You have some good mm -hmm. advisors. You mentioned Rich Santulli uh, working together. But it sounds like you're pretty hands-on in this process as well. Oh, I'm definitely hands-on. I mean, uh, you know, I, I run my own program for sure, um, be, you know, m mostly because I really want to. And I think that, you know, the closer you are to it, the better chance you have for success. Uh, although I do have, you know, some terrific people advising me, like James Delahook and sometimes Bob Feld and, and, and of course, Barry Weisbord, who is... Uh, he, he sort of, uh, he looks out for me at every turn. Yeah, a long time ago somebody told me, having grown up in the racehorse business, they said the only business that compares to the racehorse world is a restaurant. Because <laughs> it's 24 7. Because it's impossible to be successful in it? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's, it's basically very hands on yeah. and a 24 hour, you know, kind of 24 hour, 7 day a week type business. You have to be, you know, the horses can't take care of themselves. So it's yeah. It's a very good point. In fact, it, uh, you know, the person that trains my horses, Todd Pletcher, I mean, it goes without saying how incredibly successful he is. I mean, uh, and I feel like Todd and I have a lot of things in common. 
Uh, he's, he has strings of horses in different cities. I have restaurants in different cities. He has to rely on, on, on some fantastic staff to really take care of his business along with him. And he has to train them and indoctrinate them into his philosophies. And I do the same things in my kitchens in different parts of the, of the country. And so I think Todd and I have a lot in common in that way. And uh, But we made a deal that um, I would stay away from the condition books and he'd stay away from the cookbooks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, the kitchen, exactly. Well, and and uh, very humble, but you've been successful in both businesses for sure at this stage of the oh. game to have a Breeders' Cup winner and, and to be playing at this level. So congratulations. Well, thank everybody. you so much. And uh, we appreciate your time. And uh, you're going to be busy the rest of the, the evening uh, as far as uh, scouting some horses. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. You know, I never stop looking. And, um, you know, it's a great environment here tonight. I love the idea that we sort of have this twilight sale. It, it makes for a really festive environment and uh, a good place to uh, buy and sell horses. We'll let you go enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck tonight. I'll have a bourbon for you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Please. Even have two. Okay. <laughs> I will. Bobby Flay, uh, consigner as well as a potential buyer.